In this video we're going to complete example 1 and we're going to express the following ratios in simplest form. Now when we do this we're trying to make the numbers as small as possible without making them into fractions or decimals. So we'll start with the ratio 10 to 15. Remember that the golden rule is to divide or multiply both sides of the ratio by the same number. Okay, so with the ratio 10 to 15, I'm wanting to divide by something and I'm trying to find what's called a common divisor, meaning a number that will fit into both 15 and 10. And the number I can think of is 5. 5 fits into 10 two times, or 10 divided 5 is 2, and 5 fits into 15 three times. When you look at the ratio 2 to 3, you can see that it's in a simpler form than 10 to 15 because the numbers are smaller. Now I'm going to show you a technique you can use with the calculator. Calculators have a fraction button, or well, the scientific ones do anyway. On my calculator it's got ABC written on it. Some calculators have an actual picture of what looks like a fraction. Anyway, I'm going to write the ratio 10 to 15 as a fraction. Look what, what happens. 10 ABC 15 equals and notice that it gives me the answer of 2 to 3. So sometimes you can use calculators to solve these. We're going to do question B now. And B is actually one that you cannot do with a calculator only because it's got three parts to the ratio. And you can't write down three parts into a fraction. So we're going to divide by a common divisor which is 3. I can see that 3 fits into all three of these numbers. So 3 divided 3 is 1. 15 divided 3 is 5, and 9 divided 3 is 3. That is our simplified ratio here. Okay, we're now going to move on to question C, and we've got a bit of an issue here because we've got a fraction, and when we simplify ratios, we don't want fractions and we don't want decimals, we want just whole numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to times by 2, because I know that if I times a half by 2, it's going to actually turn it into a whole number, so a half times 2 actually gives me the number 1, and 4 times 2 gives me the number 8. Sometimes we're not sure if we've done enough to simplify our fraction. If you're not sure, bring up your calculator and check it. 1 to 8 can be written as 1 ABC 8. Notice when I press the equal sign, it remains the same. That means it's been simplified as much as possible. I can't do any more to this. Alright, let's move on to question D now. You'll notice that we've got a decimal this time. So we're going to multiply by something and sometimes it can be tricky to know what to multiply so you're just going to have to keep trying until you find something. I can see that multiplying this by 4 is going to work really well. I'll show you this on the calculator. 1.25 times 4 gives me 5. So I can see that this is going to give me 5 on the right hand side. The left hand side isn't too hard, 5 times 4 is 20. Now I can still go another step and try and reduce these numbers even more because both of them have a factor of 5. I can divide both of them by 5. What do I get when I do that? Well, 20 divided 5 is 4. 5 fits into 24 times and 5 divided 5 is 1. Notice that I get the ratio of 4 to 1. Now I want to show you how to do this on the calculator. If I have the ratio 20 to 5, if I was to write it in the calculator, I would want it to say that it's 4 to 1. But it's not actually going to do that in this situation. It's just going to give me an answer of 4. And this happens when the first number is bigger than the second. Notice that the 20 is bigger than the 5. Okay, So to get around this, what you do instead is you reverse it. So instead of going 20 to 5, we're going to go 5 ABC 20, which gives me 1 to 4. And then I switch this around and go, all right, the answer must be 4 to 1. So this is something you do only when the first number is bigger than the second. Anyway, let's move on to some more examples. Moving on to part E. You'll notice that both of them are a fraction. And if you want help knowing what to multiply them by, look at the denominators. 
we have a denominator of 7 and we have a denominator of 3. Let's take both of those numbers, 3 and 7, and multiply them together to get 21. We're actually going to multiply both sides by 21, and we'll see what happens. So let's bring up our calculator, and we'll start with 2 thirds times 21, so 2 ABC3 times 21 will give us 14, which is what we wanted, a nice whole number on the left hand side and then on the right hand side we have the fraction 4 over 7 4 ABC 7 oops it didn't work 4 ABC 7 times 21 and we get 12 so we get the ratio 14 to 12 remembering we want to check if we can still simplify this further and we can we can divide by 2 on both sides which is the same as halving half of 14 is 7 and half of 12 is 6 Let's just double check with the calculator that that's what you get. Now remember if you've got a bigger number than a smaller number, we can't go 14 ABC 12, otherwise it will give us three different numbers which we don't want. We have to do it in the reverse order. We have to go 12 ABC 14. Notice that we get 6 to 7 which when reversed is 7 to 6. Okay, moving on to question F. This time we have dollar amounts. We've got $2.50 and $3.25. When you do questions like this, the first thing you want to do is actually just get rid of the dollar sign. So you want to change it to 2.50.3.25. And quite often these can be solved on the calculator just as they are using the fraction button. So I'm going to go 2.50, I don't really need the O at the end, ABC 3.25 equals and notice it gives me the answer 10 to 13. So that one's quite easy to do just with the calculator. Uh, if you're not sure how to work this out, I'm looking at this, I reckon I could have times both sides by four in this particular case. And let's look at that, 2.50 times four is 10. So we can see that that gives us our 10 here. And I reckon 3.25 times 4 is going to give me my 13. There you go. But that's nice when the calculator does it all for you. Okay, moving on to question G. Once again, we've got to get rid of the units. We've got to get rid of the grams and kilograms. But we're faced with a bit of a problem. And the problem we're faced with is that they are in different units. Now, before you take the units off, they need to be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and go, well, 1.25 kilograms is 1,250 grams. So I'm going to rewrite this so that they are both in the same units. Once they are in the same units, you can then just take the units off. Let's just work this out on the calculator. 500 ABC 1250 equals, and we get the ratio 2 to 5. Nice. Alright, now let's move on to question H. And this time you'll notice they've got some prime numerals in it. All you need to know is we're actually going to divide both sides by A. Because if I do that, it's going to cancel out the A's from both sides. Alright, that gives us 15B dot dot 10. You'll notice that we don't have a B on both sides. If that happens, it means you really can't do anything with the B. It's just going to have to stay in there. And the next thing we want to do is we want to simplify the numbers 15 and 10. Now I'll show you on a calculator we can do that quite easily. Remembering we can't go 15 ABC 10 because that gives us the three numbers so we're going to have to reverse it. We're going to have to go 10 ABC 15 which gives me 2 to 3 which I need to switch over so it's 3 to 2. So I'm going to write this as 3 to 2 and I'm just going to leave the B next to the 3. And that is all you can really do for question H when you simplify it. You can't really get rid of the B. That concludes our video on example 1. Remember to read the description below for links to theory booklets that relate to this video.